Welcome to 1500ESPN.com. My name is Andrew Kramer. I want to thank you for joining me as we go over three keys for the Minnesota Vikings against the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday at TCF Bank Stadium. And if you've backed off the ledge, Vikings followers, you know they're still in control of the NFC North regardless of what the Green Bay Packers do. So all they got to do is keep winning. Now they're going to be facing a Seattle Seahawks team that is surging. They've won four of the last five games. The offense is humming. Number one key, though, is going to be for the Minnesota Vikings to stick to their identity. Number two, we'll get to containing Russell Wilson in a red-hot Seahawks offense. And then number three, we'll get to the injuries for the Minnesota Vikings. And if Sharif Floyd has to start at nose tackle for Linval Joseph, why that's not necessarily such a bad thing. So I want to tell you guys first and foremost that the Minnesota Vikings are not going to all of a sudden drop back Teddy Bridgewater 40 times, save for them falling behind early in this game, even though the Seattle Seahawks have given up a lot of yards through the air to good quarterbacks recently in Ben Roethlisberger and Carson Palmer. Teddy Bridgewater is not that, nor is this offensive line giving anybody enough time to throw the football downfield very far, and Adrian Peterson is still the best running back in the NFL. So, after the Vikings went back to and doubled down on their identity in Atlanta and ran through them, Adrian Peterson, obviously 158 rushing yards, completely controlled the clock, milked a lead for them into the fourth quarter, even though it was only a 7-3 game into the final quarter for the Minnesota Vikings. That is going to be what they need to do against the Seattle Seahawks team that's been able to put up some points. This Vikings team is not going to win many shootouts. They haven't won one yet. That's just not how they win games. What they do is they get early leads, they, they control the clock, and obviously you've seen them come back before in Chicago and against St. Louis, but that's not where their comfort zone is. And so the Minnesota Vikings do one thing really well with Adrian Peterson, and that's what they're going to stick to with the Seattle Seahawks. I do not expect them to change identities just because they see on tape that this legion of boom in, in Seattle has been susceptible down the field, giving up big plays, like I said, to the Pittsburgh Steelers and Arizona Cardinals. Look for the Vikings, though, to stick to their identity, double down, and continue to run the ball. Two, three tight end sets, heavy personnel. What you're used to seeing from the Vikings, at least as of late since uh, the first month of the season. Number two is going to be to contain Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's on fire. Eight touchdowns to zero picks in the last two games. This Seattle offense has produced nearly 1,000 yards over their last two wins. Now that's coming against San Francisco, including, but also against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're putting up points, and that's without Marshawn Lynch in those two games. Thomas Rawls, an undrafted rookie running back from this year, an undrafted rookie, has been running through the NFL. He's averaging five and a half yards per carry. In Lynch's stead, he's going to stress what the Minnesota Vikings are trying to do on defense because obviously they're going to pay so much attention to Russell Wilson. When you talk to people inside the building here at Winter Park this week, a lot of it is comparing Russell Wilson to a guy like Aaron Rodgers and saying that there's only a couple quarterbacks in this league who can get out of the pocket and make the kind of throws that these two can make. And in really there aren't many other names that are being thrown around with those two guys so they're put they're giving that kind of Rodgers respect to Russell Wilson even though he's not necessarily known for being this uh, volume passing quarterback that's what they've had to do uh, with Marshawn Lynch out obviously they're still leaning on a running game but a dual threat quarterback having to keep him in the pocket I expect them to do a lot of what they did against Aaron Rodgers in the loss at TCF Bank Stadium to the Packers when the Vikings kind of spread out their defensive linemen and tried to contain rush him, it wasn't just it wasn't a lot of blitz, it wasn't a lot of fury, it was it was just a lot of spread him out, form a pocket, and then close it, and not necessarily give him any outlets to run from. I expect them to do the same thing with Russell Wilson, who's even more elusive than Aaron Rodgers, and that's going to be a big stress not only for their coverage guys who have to stick to receivers on broken routes should the quarterback escape. Uh, but also the running game. When they run a lot of read option and do those things where Russell has checks uh, to either hand it off or throw it on a quick hot route or run it himself. Uh, so it's going to stress this Vikings defense, but they've been stingy against the pass. You saw what they did to Julio Jones, limiting him to just five catches, 56 yards, with Xavier Rhodes tracking him the entire time. There's not going to be a receiver, really, unless they give Doug Baldwin the respect uh, to track. It's just going to be more of containing that quarterback and the running game. Now, speaking of the running game, Linval Joseph has been injured this week with a foot injury. Obviously, the stalwart nose tackle for the Vikings has had a great 2015 season. 
But he looks like he's going to be the latest to sit out a game for the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, they've been without Everson Griffin for a game a couple months ago. They went without Sharif Floyd for three games. And now it looks like they're going to be without Linval Joseph. They've shifted Sharif Floyd from that defensive tackle spot over to nose so they can bump up Tom Johnson to take Sharif's spot. And Tom's more of a natural three-tech, so that's why you kind of put uh, Sharif out of position a little bit. But here's why it's not such a bad thing. The CLC Hawks, like the Green Bay Packers, like the Kansas City Chiefs, run a predominantly zone-blocking scheme. Uh, and so what that does necessarily is you're not, you're not assigning double teams necessarily on the offensive line. So you're not going to necessarily need a 329-pound nose tackle to take up some doubles if you can rely on the quickness of your defensive tackles. That's why the Vikings feel a little bit more comfortable in heading into this matchup, even though it is against a prolific running team in that they're able to use their speedy tackles up front and hopefully take advantage, if you're the Vikings, of those kinds of single blocks that you're going to face. That's not to say they're not going to look to double guys, but they might not give Sharif Floyd the respect that they're giving a guy like Linval Joseph throughout the year either. Sharif's uh, strengths are quickness, speed off the ball, his ability to beat and, and uh, get by an offensive lineman before he even gets his hands on him. That thrives more against these zone schemes where a guy's just not looking at Sharif before a play and saying, I'm going to hit him. It's just, I'm going this direction and whoever's there, I'm going to hit. With Sharif, he might be able to squeeze through some of those gaps. And I said it on the podcast, check it out, the Purple Podcast at 1500ESPN.com, that I think Sharif's going to have a big game. And this is before I knew Linball was probably going to be out. And I don't think that changes much just because he's all of a sudden at nose tackle because of how Seattle blocks. Now, Seattle's done a much better job up front with their offensive line over the past few weeks, but they're still a susceptible group, and I think the Vikings' strength is obviously still its defensive line, even if they're without Linval Joseph. So to recap, the Vikings got to stick with their identity, run Adrian Peterson, don't ask Teddy Bridgewater to do too much, because even though the Seattle defense has given up some points, they're still very talented and opportunistic. They've picked off the Steelers four times, uh, twice off Landry Jones last week against Pittsburgh. So they're still very opportunistic, talented. They can turn your mistakes into big gains for their defense. Number two, obviously, is to contain Russell Wilson. Uh, you've got to be able to stop his read option. You've got to be able to stop him getting out of the pocket. You've got to keep him in there, and hopefully your cover, cover guys can force some sacks up front with a slow rush plan. And then number three, if Sharif Floyd has to go in for Linval Joseph, not totally a bad thing. And what we didn't touch on before we go here is uh, Harrison Smith is on track to return after missing last week with a knee injury. Andrew Sandejo, though, is not. And it appears Anton Exum Jr. might get his second start this time next to Harrison Smith after he filled in for Harrison last week. I want to thank you guys for joining me here at 1500ESPN.com. Please check back to the website for more.